another lovely winter day for working so today the goal is going to be to get the sleeper back on the truck uh, i was thinking about it and the when the ground's frozen like this it's going to be much more solid and i believe safer to put the sleeper on uh, especially when spring comes too it's going to be soft and i'm thinking this this girl girl is just going to sink right into the into the mud and gravel so i uh, borrowed some fork extensions from a friend uh unfortunately they won't go down i gotta get uh it's got these little hooks here so i'm gonna grind that off that way this can actually sit behind and i'll have the extensions and then i gotta spin the sleeper around and uh then i'll i'll lift it up and i'll strap it just so it's safe and connected to the forklift back it out and then i should just be able to to stab her in there and uh just three three simple bolts and the and the sleepers on it's probably going to take a little monkey into getting it uh lined up and uh, this snow is not that forgiving but we're going to try because i'm thinking once i get the sleeper on and the boot seal in then i'll be able to throw a little space heater in there and then i can work on the interior work on the insulation work on the floor work on the wiring when it's uh when it's really cold so that's the goal let's see how far we get okay so i i rigged it up off the uh off the uh, beams or the rafters i just used a chain fall and gave her a spin so now i can uh put the forks under the old sleeper here and then uh basically just fly it out of here i'll just be able to back right up and then uh slide it right behind the cab had to do some slight adjusting to the beams to get them straight So I had a little uh, challenge with the forklift when going to reverse. So I had to take the uh, to take this mono troll guy apart, and clean it out. But I got it working now. And then I uh, ground off the uh, those little things that were preventing the extension from going on. And I got her under the sleeper. However, even with the fork extensions, it's still it's still not enough. To lift it without tipping so now what I'm gonna do is uh, strap it uh, to the mast just so it's secure and it's kind of one with the forklift and we'll uh, get that rigged up and then swing it out of here so there you go one sleeper so she's on there uh, just thought I'd take a break here and I got it close I gotta get the, uh, the mounts and then uh, bolt the front, bolt the front on so she's secure. And then uh, uh, I've got to steal the, the mount for the back of the sleeper off that old one sitting out there in, in the field. And of course, I've got to redo the boot and uh, put the strap on and seal it up. But I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Uh, there was a, a bit of a, a bit of damage, unfortunately. I guess that's what you get when you try and do this in the winter by yourself outside but it wasn't anything that i could really predict but what ended up happening was these stupid i was trying to get obviously get the sleeper close and these stupid uh, brackets that were for the uh, air conditioning lines i left them on there and so when i was trying to tuck the the sleeper tight against the cab look at that i caught the i caught the stupid thing i didn't even know it was going on while i was getting it in there so that is a bummer, but that's the extent of the damage. Uh, I guess that's the way she goes sometimes, but I'm gonna, at least the uh, big eight inch pipes will kind of block that temporarily. And as I've mentioned before, the plan is to get the whole truck and sleeper painted as a single unit. So I guess we just gotta do a little bit of body work to the new sleeper, but there you go. Little by little, I think the straps off and Start working on those uh, those front mounts, but I'm pretty pleased the way that worked. Of course, other than the scratching. Oh, it's a lot of monkeying around. So I finally got the new uh, 
new mounts in. And then trying to, to wiggle it around back and forth and over until I finally got the, uh, the pin punch in there. So I should be able to get the bolt in. And then once this one's in, the other side should go pretty easy because I can just give it a turn and it should line right up. But boy, oh boy, there's no end of, uh, of hard work on this old girl. Little by little. Okay, so I got the forklift out of the way. As I mentioned, I still have to put that uh, back support in. That's obviously just temporary. Got to steal the one off that sleeper, but... And then uh, still got to bring this guy in just a touch. I should be able to um, put that bolt in and those bushings. So here's all the wiring. That's going to be a fun treat. I guess I'll just have to ring each of the wires out one at a time and see which one does what. Um, have to reconnect the lines for the coolant. I just can't connect it together there. I should probably run new lines. Those are pretty vintage. And now I can mount this tank. Uh, it was my judgment to leave the shiniest, newest tank that I got from Josh at Red Ram off the truck until the sleeper was on. Um, the when I was going forward here, obviously this is ice, and it uh, it probably would have dinged up the tank because I had to go back and forth a few times to finally get it in the uh, in the perfect spot. Um, if you recall from an earlier video, I used a Doka disc to get those decals off of there, so I probably still need to polish that out because you can kind of see it in the light. Well, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool. I got it on there, so. There's the key, I guess, for the door. And then we'll look inside. I took the temporary panel I had out of there. And there we go. So yeah, this basically just fits up. And then there's a ring, just like uh, this ring here, that just goes all the way around. So I think I've heard from talking to some folks that that can be a bit of a pain. One person suggested just using vice grips to pinch and hold. Well, I kind of put the ring in place and get it started and put all the screws through and I'll throw the seat out of here. I just wanted to, to try it out and see what it was like, um, but uh, well, it's obviously just temporary, but I'm very pleased because it's supposed to continue being stupid, stupid cold for the next couple weeks for the foreseeable future. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I can put a, a space heater in the sleeper and start working on the floor i'm going to do a matching floor so whatever i do here i'm going to do the same there uh, so probably some sort of uh underlay there was a lot of suggestions like a lizard skin and that kind of stuff i'll probably put that down and then put that rubberized on the bottom uh vinyl flooring there's my steering wheel sitting in there and yeah we're making some Making some progress now. Put some insulation in, get that uh, stainless steel panel. But now I can sit in here and I can do, I can do wiring, I can do other work. <clears throat> and start to, to clean up the interior. Again, knocking off the ugly, little by little. But I'm pretty pleased with how the day went. Obviously upset about the scratches on the other side, but what do you do? Sometimes things aren't perfect, but you can get them as close as you can. So there, she's starting to starting to look like a truck again. So I picked up a present from the gear center. So this is the the rebuilt unit. As I mentioned, they had to um, use and go with a new case. And then, if you recall from the previous video, if you noticed, these were uh, coarse spline. Uh, input and output shafts you can't get those anymore so they couldn't uh, they couldn't rebuild it without going to the fine spline which what that drove is new yokes on the input and output so this was a this is a pretty pricey um, insert but at least it's rebuilt it's got warranty and it should work just fine so let's hope that uh, that back differential is is tip top and doesn't need a rebuild as well so I went with the 456, just so it matched the rear, so I didn't have to rebuild the rear. Um, and yeah, <laughs> a 
let's cut, keep the fingers crossed. I'm thinking it won't be too, too bad because of the auxiliary. And it is a, a true double over as opposed to some auxiliaries that uh, aren't uh, the overdrive. So this is a six speed over and then the, uh, the four speed auxiliary in the high gear is overdrive as well. So I think she'll do just fine going down the highway. So yeah, I have to pick a warmer day to put that in. Uh, I want to make sure that the gasket material that I use will uh, will set up properly. But I uh, probably want to do it before it gets too warm and muddy because we don't want to introduce any dirt. So yeah, there it is. At least I have it back now and uh, she's ready to go in. So in the never-ending quest to knock off the ugly on this truck, uh, you'll recall that I actually removed the, um, the chicken lights and the chrome strips from the old sleeper. However, I think those lights are kind of tacky. So I was actually lucky enough when I was talking to Ryan, the, uh, the guy that bought the sister truck to this one, he had a, a set of stainless steel, stainless steel trim for a 63 inch cab and then for the truck as well. So I think that's gonna look real sharp on there. I don't know if I'll be able to hold it up, but you kind of get the idea. So that'll look, uh, that'll look pretty good. Again, still need to get the tank mounted. And then for those that are interested, this is the sleeper boot. And eventually it just goes right in here. And it just holds the, uh, holds the rubber boot in place and you just screw it all the way around. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much the update for this week. Now that, uh, as I mentioned, now that the sleeper's on, I'm pretty excited because I'll be able to do some work in there. And obviously got to take the seat out. It was just for mock-up purposes and to, uh, to dream what it'll be like to, to drive this truck someday. But yeah, get the floor in and then keep, keep working on the wiring. There's a lot of stainless steel panels. Uh, there's a company by the name of, I think it's called Dirks. They were the ones that provided me these, these new replacement uh, wipers. They've got a lot of chrome pieces, so you're wondering why that's off. It's kind of going to clean in there, and then I'm going to put the, the stainless steel pieces. You get one for here, one for there, and, and one there. So that should look pretty good. And just continue to clean it up and get her one step closer to to getting on the road but I'm pretty excited about this it uh, came out quite well looks good pretty pleased so there's your update hope you enjoyed it little by little